Hi, this is Brie for the um, Study Abroad Fine Arts Final. Um, the first question is, um, what is the difference between art and non-art? Um, that's really, really hard to define, and I really think it kind of comes down to what the creator is making it for. Is it intended to be art? Like, what is the intended audience? Because in any, like, for example, in any normal circumstance, a urinal wouldn't be considered art, but because Duchamp put his name on it and submitted it, like, for the art show, like, it is now renowned as, you know, an incredible piece of art that, um... And so it's kind of examples like that. It's like, does the is it made for an intended audience or does is there an audience who sees it as art and who views it that way? And it's really blurred between the lines, but I don't think that there is a specific definition that you can give to between what is art and what is non-art because, you know, people can see art in so many different ways and so many different forms from architecture to music to, you know, how the how the sidewalk is paved and what tiles are used in the underground. There are just so many ways to capture that. It's hard to put a definition on it. Um, seeing the art in person over there, like, because I'm an art student, so I've taken several art history classes and I've seen um, most of the art that we saw in the museums, like I've seen like in on projectors and screens during lectures, during my class times, and to see them all in person for the first time was incredible. Um, I feel like by seeing the art in person, you kind of see like the true form of like how it's meant to be seen because you just, you miss, like you miss the size and the scale of it whenever you're just looking at a presentation um, or a PowerPoint. You miss like, you miss the details that you can see up close. You can see how, it, you miss how it's like staged and like the ambiance around or the atmosphere around that art piece like whether it's in the museum or whether it's outside like um you know the atmosphere around the Eiffel Tower like you just miss those things in the book um and so it was it was incredible to see them all in person um especially especially the bigger pieces especially like the renaissance paintings like the national gallery i really really appreciated that because there were so many huge renaissance paintings that seeing them up close and seeing like the amount of finite detail in every single one is something that you you can't see in a book you can't get that close um so that was really great um i think that it's it's so amazing that so much of this art has been preserved for years and years and years and not only that but that people saw and chose this art as being worthy of being preserved because i can't I can't really think of many like contemporary pieces that were made like now that like I would pick out and be like oh like we need to conserve this we need to you know keep this for years and years and years and it's kind of amazing that um people were able to pick out those pieces or these were the pieces that survived um you know years of like destruction and pillaging and whatnot um to get what we have today and um I think it's amazing that some people risk their lives for the art. Um, like like I said before, I can't really think of any specific pieces that have been created today that I'd be like, oh, I would risk my life and put that on the line to rescue this piece of art because it's that important. But it's amazing that people were were able to make that differentiation and to see this art as like truly important for the time period. Um, I experienced the most, you know, aha moments, the most moments of wonder um, whenever we were in, whenever I saw the huge architectural spaces from the cathedrals to like the Eiffel Tower, um, the, the mat, like it was just on, like we went into the Parthenon as well, like to see those buildings in such a large scale. I had never been in a building that large before and you know Versailles and like not only were those buildings just so huge that you could just like stare at them in awe but like the the tiling the you know the arches the paneling the like every little finite detail and like the cathedrals and the palace and everything like 
and just to stand there and see like not only is this huge and intricate but it was all done by hand years and years ago when we didn't when we didn't have near the technology that we do today so to see those big architectural feats where those were my big aha moments um i think that this trip will um this trip has definitely you know influenced me like for the better i definitely want to go and see you know i definitely have like the drive to just just to go back and to see more and to see as much as i can and to really appreciate those pieces and that art that's there because i've never seen anything like that before experienced anything like that um i don't know i think yeah i think the biggest thing that i've um that I got from the trip was just to like that there's so many like big things out there that like are worthy of seeing and that you know will give you those aha moments to just kind of keep pursuing that and to keep going after that and keep traveling to see those new things um